the denial of bail to four accused in the Tabo Pesta escape case. The fifth accused, Natasha Janssen, was granted 10,000 rand bail. Now, in giving his decision, the magistrate, Mutlolo Khabisi, said, and I quote, the nature of this case is unusual. I have to weigh the personal circumstances of the accused and the interests of justice. There is a prima facie case against Matswara, Dipolo, Masugela, and Makhotza. Now, legal expert Mpumelelo Zigalala joins me now to weigh in on this, just to give us some of his uh, uh, expert analysis. Mpumelelo, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Is it fair to say this magistrate's ruling on this bail application was to be expected, having listened to what the defense lawyers argued last week? Good afternoon, Pratian, and also to your viewers. I would say, yes, you might have uh, uh, sort of extracted from the type of comments that they did, but I was uh, expecting that bail would be granted in the following circumstances. Now, you can't take away that the person's right of remaining innocent are still there, even in, during bail proceedings. It's a constitutional right that can't be taken away. So the only time in which you can say to a person, you're indeed guilty when the court order has been issued after evidence has been laid. If no evidence has been laid, you still have to regard that person as innocent. Now, the granting of bail is the protection or the balancing of these two competing rights together, the right to make sure that when it comes to the administration of justice, everything is done accordingly, while your right to freedom is guaranteed by the Constitution has been uh, sort of realized. Now, in doing that, if there's no evidence that has been adduced that says you are likely to evade trial, you are likely to, to affect or to influence witnesses. You are likely to, to endanger the public or the issuing of bail will be sort of contrary to what the interest of justice actually state. There's no reason why you should be kept in jail. There's, it is not the time to determine the innocence or guilt of the individuals at the, at the bail proceedings. That's the work that has to be done by the, the trial uh, uh, mm. uh, court. So in these instances, I was a bit uh, sort of uh, taken aback or, or, or sort of surprised as to why the, the, the judge or the, the magistrate will come to this particular conclusion. When there's no evidence that has been laid that said uh, previously you have engaged in activities where you have influenced witnesses, you've tried to escape. If they are all first time offenders with no criminal records, so some of them are stand corrected on that point. So, on what basis do you come to a conclusion yeah. that they are going to be tried? Yeah. Except on one, basis are they yeah. one of them, I understand, um, Pumelelo, one of them has an old case about stock theft, uh, which was a suspended sentence. But I, I get your point, I hear you. Uh, do you. So, you don't think the court was convinced otherwise? Because the magistrate is saying the nature of the case is unusual, and he had to balance between personal interests and the rights that you've expressed and the uh, issue of. Um, whether it's in the interest of justice or not, maybe he was not convinced completely that uh, there's no flight risk, as an example. Hmm. Why you can't ignore the facts or the circumstances of the case? You can't be embedded with them because you are not the trial court. The only thing you're interested in is, is based on those four points and exceptional circumstances that have to be provided by the individuals. There's nothing in which they are going to do it, which is going to impact the manner in which the proceedings are going. Now, I may know the witnesses that are there, but I'm not going to influence 90% or even more of the cases that go to trial on a daily basis in our courts. The witnesses are known to the perpetrators, and it, 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 it is not a foregone conclusion that if I know, or know, know the witness list which is supported in my trial, I'm going to try and influence those particular individuals. Now, as a presiding officer, you have to try and stay away from all the other attention which is afforded to the trial, and look at the circumstances and what the law actually tells you. The law is clear. If there's no evidence in front of you that says that there's a likelihood that this individual is going to influence the witnesses, is going to evade sure. trial, is going to jeopardize the interests of justice, is going to engage or they may they are released with public uh, uh, violence, you... then there's no basis points in which mm. you can come back and say bail should not be granted. Do you think he was swayed by public sentiment, especially because he was saying there is a prima facie case against uh, the four individuals? I think the admission of saying that this is a unique case, it's not a case that, is a, that has been done or been heard in our courts, the media sensation that has taken place, the number of, of, of hours and time in which has been afforded to this big proceeding, this certainly swayed him in terms of believing that, hey, this is a, probably a case which is, is, is bigger than uh, the type of cases that we usually listen to. So on that basis, I'm going to come to this conclusion. But don't make the mistake of prejudging the innocence or guilt of the individual, especially if you are going to say it's serious allegations. Yes, all allegations are serious. But what is mostly important is that look at the, the individual who is sitting in the 
accused Fox as a person who is innocent as prescribed by the Constitution. The rest of the evidence that will follow later as to their innocence or, or guilt is yeah. going to be decided by the trial judge. What you're most interested in, if I release them, is it in the interest of justice? Yeah, the magistrate, the magistrate Mutlolo Khabis at some point did mention the fact of uh, our constitution providing innocence um, until you are proven guilty in a court, in a, in a court of law. What, I, I mean, w when you look at it, has he, pr in his ruling today, in denying bail to the four individuals, being Mr. Matswara, Mr. Dipolo, Mr. Masugela, and Mr. Makoza, has he somehow provided some kind of ammunition from a legal perspective to the defense when the trial or when they return to court on the 20th of June? Should we expect uh, uh, that to, to happen? I think when it comes to the appeal, if they are going to appeal, the transcripts from today's proceedings are going to be crucial. Those exact points of saying that, yes, you are afforded the, the opportunity to be regarded as innocent, but that is only for the trial, trial court to determine that. It simply means that you are misplaced in terms of the placing of the innocence of the individual or the, of the accused who is in front of you. And that may have blinded your, your discretionary purposes or discretion, discretionary powers when it comes to determining whether pay should be afforded or not. And on the circumstances, on the facts which are provided in front of you, what information have you got that says there's a likelihood that this person is going to be very trial? I would have understood if the reason was that you did not provide me with enough information that enables me to come to the conclusion, or there's no information or support has provided to me at all by the, the individuals, because the onus is on you as an applicant to convince the court and says there's no likelihood that exists that I'm going to be trapped, influence, influence witnesses, or jeopardize the administration of, of justice. In those cases, I would have understood. But to simply say, um, based on the, on the magnitude of the matter, based on the unique circumstances of the matter, I'm all the conclusion that you should not receive pay. Our law does not allow that. Okay, thank you very much, Mbumelelo uh, Zegalala, for your legal expertise as we analyze this. Uh, while some of us might have expected such a decision, uh, he says it's a bit surprising in terms of um, the argument that was made, the ruling rather, that was made by Magistrate Mutlolo Khabis. We'll have to wait and see. June 20th is not far away. There might be an appeal by the, uh, the legal teams of, on behalf of the four individuals who were not uh, given bail uh, today.